Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals of attitudes and aggression. We will help you understand what forms our attitudes, the different types of aggression, and the theories that exist to try to understand aggression. Let's get started. Attitudes are a complex mix of feelings, beliefs and values which lead us to think and behave in a specific way. The attitude object is the focus of an individual's attitude and can be specific objects, a situation, a person, an event, or an idea. The components that make up attitudes are made up of a triadic model. The cognitive component reflects our belief, knowledge and thoughts such as playing sport keeps me fit and healthy. The affective component reflects our emotions and feelings such as I enjoy playing sport. And the behavioural component reflects our intended or actual behaviour such as I participate in sport regularly. However, it must be noted that the cognitive and affective components are not always straightforward. For example, someone may enjoy going to the gym, they know it is good for them, but fail to go on a regular basis. Formation of attitudes can be influenced by many factors, such as social learning, where attitudes are strongly influenced by the attitudes of our peers or by imitating a significant other, past experiences, both positive and negative, and conditioning, where attitudes can be strengthened with the use of rewards or praise. There are also a number of other perceptions that affect our attitudes. Prejudice, which is a performed opinion or judgment of someone or something based on irrational, incomplete or inaccurate views. Stereotypes are a standardised image or concept shared by all members of a social group. Discrimination is unjust or prejudiced treatment of someone, something or a specific group, such as a race or sex. And social norms, which are unwritten rules about how to behave that provide an expected idea of how to behave in a particular social group, community or culture. It is of course possible to change attitudes. There are commonly two accepted ways in which to do this. Persuasive communication. This is most effective if the persuader is considered significant or has a high status. The message needs to be clear, unambiguous, confident, logical and appeal to the recipient's sense of fear or failure. The recipient must be educated enough to understand the message. And the message should be given at an appropriate time and within the correct context. The second method is cognitive dissonance, which is a change of attitude on the assumption that one or more components of the triadic model can be manipulated to be positive. After reviewing the new information or experience, the individual either develops a new attitude or retains their existing attitude. For example, an athlete might know nutrition the night before a competition is vital and they might know that eating junk food is bad for their health and performance, but do it anyway because they like it. There are three different types of aggression. Hostile aggression is behaviour outside of the laws of the game with intention to harm another person and inflicted with anger, such as throwing a punch in the middle of a game. Channeled aggression is behaviour that is within the laws of the game but has the side effect of inflicting harm or physical pain, such as going hard into a tackle. And assertive behaviour is aggressive behaviour that aims to achieve a goal using legitimate force. Any injury caused is accidental, such as jumping for a 50-50 ball. The causes of aggression can usually be broken down into three categories. 
psychological arousal, in which anger towards an individual or group causes an increase in arousal. This will usually happen if the individual is highly motivated, such as during a derby match. Underdeveloped moral reasoning, in which players with lower moral reasoning are likely to be more aggressive. And bracketed morality, in which there is a double standard or accepting aggressive behaviour in sport, but not in everyday life, such as in martial arts or boxing. There are a number of theories on aggression. Instinct theory is a nature view that aggression is an innate and natural characteristic of humans and is necessary in the development and survival of our species. Built up aggression needs to be released and sport could be a cathartic release. However, criticisms of this theory are that human aggression is not often spontaneous and Levels of aggression only increase for some people when playing sport and not in other areas of life. Social learning theory is a nurture view that aggression is learnt by observing others and copying their behaviour. If reinforced, the copied actions are repeated in a similar situation. However, the main criticism to this theory is that this does not explain why some people may show aggressive behaviour without observing others in a similar situation. Frustration aggression theory suggests that aggression is born out of frustration as the athlete is being blocked from achieving a goal. This then causes a drive to be aggressive towards the source of the frustration. However, frustration does not always lead to aggression and not all aggression is caused by frustration. It can be learnt or be situational and aggressive cue hypothesis, which suggests that frustration will cause arousal levels to increase, but aggression will only occur if there are socially acceptable cues present. For example, the referee not watching, or a coach reinforces that type of behaviour. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.